Editor Lin had kept Tang Ning's incident a secret, intending to reveal it all at once for fame. However, one impulsive staff member leaked Tang Ning's photo online. Furious, Editor Lin reprimanded him, threatening to fire him if he weren't his cousin. Realizing the severity of his actions, the staff member packed his bags as Editor Lin decided to abandon their hideout to evade Hai Rui's pursuit. Meanwhile, Mo Ting instructed Fang Yu to focus on investigating Huarong Studio, suspecting their involvement. As Tang Ning faced scandal, Huo Jingjing encountered trouble with a lingerie brand, IY, violating their contract and humiliating her during a show rehearsal. Despite her status, IY's underworld connections made them relentless. Fang Yu received a call from Huo Jingjing's assistant, prompting him to inform Mo Ting. Mo Ting warned Father Chuan, hinting at dire consequences if Chuan Ye continued to meddle. Mo Ting and Tang Ning planned to fly to France while Fang Yu dealt with the photo scandal. Mo Ting opted not to announce their relationship yet, but if provoked, he was ready to retaliate. Meanwhile, Hai Rui's hunt for Huarong Studio intensified. Fang Yu rushed to Huarong's location but found it deserted, suspecting collusion or hidden evidence. He then hurried to assist Huo Jingjing, who was enduring IY's abuse during rehearsal. Arriving with bodyguards, Fang Yu intervened, putting a stop to IY's mistreatment of Huo Jingjing. As tensions escalated, the situation reached a critical point, with Hai Rui's influence pitted against underworld connections. Huo Jingjing, feeling embarrassed in her scanty attire, blushed upon seeing Fang Yu. He immediately draped his jacket over her shoulders shielding her modesty. However, their departure was halted by the show director, who challenged Fang Yu's authority. Asserting his position as Hai Rui's artist's director, Fang Yu demanded to see the contract. When the director persisted, Fang Yu ordered his bodyguards to seize him, emphasizing the contract's terms. Despite protests, Fang Yu made his point forcefully, leaving the director subdued. Taking Huo Jingjing away, Fang Yu ensured her comfort and safety, revealing IY's shady past and their disregard for Hai Rui. He assured her that Mo Ting would handle the situation. Arriving at Fang Yu's home, Huo Jingjing hesitated to accept his hospitality, fearing IY's retaliation. Fang Yu, however, offered her refuge for the night. Despite their professional distance, Huo Jingjing observed Fang Yu's kindness towards his daughter and appreciated his support. As Fang Yu left for the office, Huo Jingjing reconsidered staying at the hotel. Touched by Fang Yu's plea, she decided to stay, empathizing with the little girl's loneliness. Meanwhile, Fang Yu returned to work, collaborating with Mo Ting to expose IY's misdeeds. Leveraging his cousin's expertise and connections, Mo Ting obtained incriminating information against IY, intending to release it publicly. At the airport, Tang Ning and Mo Ting discussed their plans. Tang Ning admired Mo Ting's family's remarkable talents, including his cousin's involvement in uncovering IY's illegal activities. Amidst their conversation, Fang Yu relayed news of Huarong Studio's disappearance. Tang Ning suspected they might be attempting to capture another compromising photo of her reflecting on her past scandals. In 500 words, the scene portrays Fang Yu's assertiveness in defending Huo Jingjing's dignity, his determination to confront IY's wrongdoing, and the underlying support between Tang Ning and Mo Ting, showcasing their unified strength in facing challenges then, I will reluctantly continue to be your fourth and fifth man, Mo Ting brushed his hand through Tang Ning's hair and placed a kiss on her forehead. You don't need to worry about other things, just keep yourself in the best condition. Focus on your meeting with Claude. N and try your best to secure their endorsement. You seem to always have so much faith in me. By the way, will second uncle end up seeing the photo? Will he develop an opinion towards me? Tang Ning was conscious of how Mo Ting's family viewed her. Second uncle will merely blame me for not taking good care of you. Tang Ning snuggled up to Mo Ting he was someone she could rely on for life. He was her husband, the person she most trusted, admired, and treasured. Don't worry. With you accompanying me through all my battles, 
I will only grow stronger. Tang Ning exclaimed with confidence. Your status in Beijing is relatively stable. If possible, you should spend more time interacting with your fans. This time, with the photo incident, your fans are really worried about you. In a moment, let's not take the VIP route, we will take the normal route so you can let your fans see that you are doing well. I've always felt that I owe my fans the most. Through all my battles, although I put in all my effort, I still would not have got to where I am today without their support, Tang Ning nodded her head in agreement. Thank you hubby, I will follow your arrangements. The fans glanced at Mo Ting quickly before shrinking back in fear. They smiled at him awkwardly, it must be nonsense. With President Mo by your side, a hundred men would not be able to compare to just one of him. You have good taste. Tang Ning praised before Mo Ting turned her head and guided her through the ticket checking gates. Plenty of fans captured the loving scene at the airport and many of them felt that the Tang Ning they met today was a little different to her usually cold self. She walked quickly and wore sunglasses like she usually did, but, this time, she smiled and no longer answered their questions with her usual cold tone. Could it be that Mo Ting influenced this change in her? Welcome everyone to another episode of Full Access Entertainment. If we are to talk about the most famous model at present, no other person would be more suited than Tang Ning from Hai Rui. With her perfect legs and envy-inducing professional catwalk, as soon as she steps on the runway, she immediately demands everyone's attention. However, a recent photo has been released online of Tang Ning kissing a man accompanied by a suggestive comment that she may have more than one man. Our editor would like to point out that Tang Ning gained the success she has today through taking one difficult step at a time. How could someone bear to defame a hard-working person like her? As for today, some witnesses have reported a sighting of Tang Ning boarding a flight to France at the airport. Rumor has it that she has been invited by Claude. N. God, this is massive news for the modeling industry. Above all, Tang Ning appeared relaxed the entire time. It seems she has not been affected by the photo incident at all. This is evidence that those with true capabilities will never be held back by others' envy. The current Tang Ning had become a regular on entertainment news. Of course, by creating such a scene with her trip to France, wasn't she announcing her schedule to those that wanted to follow her? No matter if it was Chuan Ye or editor Lin from Huarong, they both immediately booked the next flight to France. Not only did Chuan Ye want to appear before Tang Ning, he even found an expert photo editor to change Mo Ting's body into his own and re-released the photo. Seeing how much Mo Ting cared about Tang Ning. If he could hurt Tang Ning, it would be equivalent to hurting Mo Ting. Since he couldn't compete with Mo Ting, he could only mess around with Tang Ning. Let's see how many people will believe her. However, by suggesting Tang Ning to take the normal airport route, would Mo Ting have not considered this outcome? That night, Fang Yu was a little worried whether Huo Jingjing was getting along with Fang Yu. So, he decided to leave the office early and bring his work home. His keys gently unlocked the front door, revealing the woman and child asleep on the sofa. Huo Jingjing was hugging Fang Yu, they looked extremely close. Fang Yu's heart was slightly moved. He approached the sofa, knelt down before the two and watched them in silence for quite some time. Finally, he noticed they didn't have a blanket, so he quickly retrieved one from the bedroom and lay it on top of them so they could sleep in more comfort. No woman would ever accept a child born from another woman, right? Fang Yu thought. Fang Yu stood up and hurried into his study room. In actual fact, Huo Jingjing had long been awake. When she felt Fang Yu's eyes upon them, she was extremely nervous. However, she also heard him sighing to himself. Time quickly flew by and it was already the middle of the night. Fang Yu had been sitting in front of the computer the entire night. It was time for him to seek revenge for Huo Jingjing. Every hour that ticked over, he would release a piece of news about IY. Every time the public thought things couldn't get any worse, he would reveal something even more shocking. By 3 a.m., one of the most popular social networks found their website had crashed due to excessive activity. 
10 Scandals of IY Number 1, Has IY Actually Ceased Providing Special Services? Undercover Reporter Reveals All 10 Scandals of IY Number 2, Model Refuses to Appear on the Runway So Was Drowned in the Sea 10 Scandals of IY Number 3, IY Summoned by Police Multiple Times but issue always gets covered up by underworld connections. After an entire night without sleep, Fang Yu finally returned to his bedroom early in the morning. At this time, Huo Jing Jing was awoken by a phone call, it was her manager. Jing Jing, go online and check out the news. The internet is exploding. Huo Jing Jing hung up the phone and immediately logged into the mainstream social networks. Straight away, she saw the latest update of IY's progress, their boss had been summoned by the police. In just one night, Mo Ting and Fang Yu were capable of destroying an entire brand. Of course, it wasn't merely a brand, they had also torn apart an entire nest of criminals. Need they be so cool? Before she became friends with Fang Yu and Tang Ning, she had always tackled things on her own. So, she had never experienced the charm of a man. It turned out, things were very different to when she was a crying woman. Especially when it came to Fang Yu. From close up, she could now feel a sense of security from him. Huo Jingjing was filled with joy. She subconsciously ran over to Fang Yu's study room and started knocking on the door. But, it took quite some time before Fang Yu tiredly opened the bedroom door on the opposite side of the hallway. I'm over here. You said you'd only take one day. You did it. Huo Jingjing was dressed in a loosely fit white sweater. Her hands were behind her back as her voice slightly trembled. Did you come look for me to tell me this? It was all President Mo's doing, Fang Yu yawned, skewing his usually handsome face. President Mo and Tang Ning have gone to France. I saw the news from last night. Even if President Mo initially played an important role, without you here to control the situation, it would not have been such a huge success, right? Basically, yes, Fang Yu couldn't be bothered to say much. He simply returned to his bed dressed in boxers, if possible, make breakfast for my daughter. I didn't sleep all night and am exhausted. When you leave, make sure to lock the door. Huo Jingjing lowered her head and stared at her feet. She eventually opened her mouth and asked, What was the reason this time? What do you mean? Why did you put so much effort into screwing up IY? No reason. It was President Mo's orders, Fang Yu replied calmly before closing his eyes It doesn't have the tiniest bit to do with me. Huo Jingjing suddenly increased the volume of her voice. Fang Yu remained silent for a while without a word. Just as Huo Jingjing was about to give up waiting for a response, Fang Yu suddenly said, it's pointless to tell you the truth. If you really feel it's pointless, then stop offering me your help. I will be extremely thankful. After speaking, Huo Jingjing turned around to leave. However, at this time, Fang Yu suddenly sat up and questioned her. You've already wasted over a decade of your life to a jerk. Do you want to be ridiculed by everyone for becoming a stepmother? Is that what you want? Do you want to be treated as a laughing stock? I thought you were disgusted by my past, Huo Jingjing suddenly laughed after hearing Fang Yu's questions. However, her voice concealed a sense of bitterness, I thought you were afraid that others would say you picked up a pair of broken shoes. Fang Yu had actually become completely awake after all the questioning. He felt it was time to lay everything on the table. So, he put on a robe, pulled Huo Jingjing back into the room and closed the door, let's talk. Fang Yu led Huo Jingjing to his bed and sat her down on the edge before saying to her in a serious tone, you saw it. I already have a daughter. Fang Yu felt his blood rush to his head. Huo Jingjing had already been so straightforward, it was obvious she didn't mind that he had a daughter at all. If he was to continue to hide, would that mean he was less courageous than a woman? Xiao Yu is actually the daughter of my younger brother. I indeed had a girlfriend, but she passed away. My brother, Fang Yu made a mistake when he was still in high school and ended up with Fang Yu. 
he decided to abandon her after she was born, so I took her in and treated her like my own daughter. No wonder, even though she wasn't his actual daughter, they still looked similar. It was because he was her uncle. Outsiders would not be able to tell. Look, even though she isn't my own flesh and blood, I am still responsible for her. So, whoever ends up as my partner, won't be able to ever reveal the truth. I see where you're coming from, Huo Jingjing nodded. She was already satisfied with the fact that Fang Yu was willing to open up to her, that's why you technically have a clean past. I, on the other hand, I've never felt any less of you, nor have I ever been afraid of getting ridiculed by others. But, being with me is filled with difficulties. If you think about being exposed in the future you will realize it won't be easy. Huo Jingjing lifted her head and laughed, I am not Tang Ning, I'm not as smart as she is and I can't counterattack everything. Whereas you aren't President Mo, you're not a master strategist with a plan for everything. We aren't a perfect match like they are. But, as long as you don't give up on me, I am willing to give us a try. I am certain I still have the strength to love, no matter how much pain is coming my way. After hearing this, Fang Yu wrapped his arms around Huo Jingjing and pulled her into his embrace, aggressively hugging her. This was the most special thing about Huo Jingjing she still had the courage to love. Physically, she was worn and battered, but her soul was still dazzling. Let me warn you, you can't turn back. Are your parents aware of UER1? After they realized I had an unexplainable daughter, they cut off all ties with me. It turned out. Fang Yu was also a blame taker. On the surface, everyone was wearing a mask, but the pain one felt inside could only be understood by someone of the same kind. It's okay, we can get through everything together. After arriving in France, the first phone call Tang Ning received was from Huo Jing Jing. As close girlfriends, Huo Jingjing naturally had to share everything that happened with Fang Yu to Tang Ning. Unfortunately, the first thing Tang Ning did when she arrived in France was go to sleep so she could adjust to the time difference. So, the person to pick up the phone was Manager Mo, what is it? President Mo. Where's Tang Ning? Sleeping. You can leave a message, I'll pass it on to her, Mo Ting's voice was calm without a trace of emotion. How could she speak about her private matters to a man? So, Huo Jingjing ended up hanging up the phone on Mo Ting. Mo Ting put down the phone and looked at the woman in his arms. He then got in contact with Claude. N while watching over Tang Ning as she slept. Not long after, Mo Ting received a phone call from Fang Yu. He had called to report about Huarong Studio. President, we've searched through Huarong's supposed base but only found small amounts of evidence. Amongst the evidence was the photo of Tang Ning kissing. This photo is proof that it was indeed leaked by the guys at Huarong. They are currently well hidden. No matter how well they are hidden, you need to dig them out. Even if you have to dig three feet underground, Mo Ting replied in a deep voice. He then continued, but, no rush. Perhaps, they may have followed us to France. Obviously, the release of the photo wasn't intentional. Or else, they wouldn't have kept the photo hidden for so long. This is why they had to run away, Fang Yu analyzed, no matter what President L. Yu Che and I will look for information regarding the boss of Huarong. Hopefully, he won't cause any more dramas. But, his whole purpose is to create drama. Since we dealt with someone like I Y. Did you think a small studio like Huarong could get away? Fang Yu was in a good mood and full of energy. Maybe we can turn things around and use it to our advantage. President Mo, what you mean is? Let's play along with Huarong's plans and see how many people want to get involved. When the time comes, we can take them all down at once. Let's sit back and see what else Huarong wants. The only reason why Mo Ting was brave enough to play along was that he was betting on the fact that he and Tang Ning were married. Whatever claims Huarong was to make, he'd have evidence to refute them. Perhaps, he may even need to bring a certain event forward. Would Tang Ning blame him? 
After talking openly and honestly in the morning, Huo Jingjing and Fang Yu's relationship changed. They had successfully become a couple. So, Huo Jingjing had reason to stay at Fang Yu's home, even after IY's incident was over. After breakfast, Huo Jingjing and Fang Yu played with building blocks in the living room. Fang Yu stepped out after washing up and crossed his arms as he asked, Aren't you going to get changed? Huo Jingjing did not look at Fang Yu. As she played with the building blocks, she replied, I will leave at night. If I step out now, I might get surrounded by reporters again. Fang Yu understood that she actually wanted to spend more time with Fang Yu. So, he did not refuse, I have a day off today as well. Huo Jingjing lifted her head, her eyes glimmered. At first, she wanted to suggest they find a place to develop their relationship. But she then remembered their identities and lowered her head disappointedly. They were currently standing in the peak of a storm, it was best if she caused less trouble for Fang Yu. Fang Yu seemed to have seen through Huo Jingjing's thoughts, so he said, the nanny will arrive in a moment to take care of Xiao Yu. When she arrives, come to my study room. What do you want to do? Do you still want to take on jobs like IY? After all, you do have an international status. With the incident this time, you are bound to find that your value has dropped. Your manager can't escape the blame this time. In actual fact, IY's incident had nothing to do with her manager. Huo Jingjing had rushed into it because she wanted to avoid reality and quickly focus on work. As a result, she did not take the time to fully understand IY before she accepted their offer straight away. But, who did she do this because of? Huo Jingjing looked at Fang Yu and asked, With what identity are you speaking to me about this? It seems, all my identities have the right to speak to you about this, Fang Yu did not back down. Who was she kidding? If Huo Jingjing could shut him up so easily, he might as well quit his role as PR director. As his response was so powerful, Huo Jingjing's face turned red. Her heart felt like it was flowing through a warm oasis, she felt sweet and a little tired, but, it was a beautiful feeling. If they had continued to be indecisive about their relationship, how much happiness would they have missed out on? Luckily, they had both realized in time. Fine. I'll keep Xiao Yu company for a little while longer. You go have breakfast first. Fang Yu nodded his head and returned to his study room with a glass of milk. He then continued with the work Mo Ting had left behind, to collate information about Huarong Studio. As he thought about how Mo Ting had mentioned these idiots would follow them to France, he immediately contacted his friends at the airport and did a search of all those flying to France with the surname Lin. Finally, he locked down on a skinny tall man named Lin Chong. Fang Yu sent a message to Mo Ting for confirmation. As Tang Ning had seen him the most, with one glance, she was able to identify the man. He is traveling with a man and a woman. The woman is quite interesting, guess who it is, after a few seconds, Fang Yu continued, Charlene. In actual fact, there were more than three people. However, they were acting separately. Even more interesting was, I found Chuan Ye was also on the same flight. Tang Ning noticed Mo Ting in a video conference with Fang Yu and L Yu Che. She was aware that Mo Ting had not had any rest since disembarking their flight. So, she got up, filled the bath and called room service to prepare food for him. L Yu Che will fly over to help us out here in France. Fang Yu will continue to watch over the situation in Beijing. Ten minutes later, Mo Ting turned off his computer before Tang Ning handed him a bathrobe, go have a bath and then come out to eat. Mo Ting rubbed his neck and refused to take the bathrobe as he tilted his head and asked. Am I having a bath on my own? I already had one earlier. Help me bathe then. After speaking, he grabbed Tang Ning's hand and dragged her into the bathroom. Inside the warm misty bathroom, a layer of steam enshrouded the couple. After removing his clothes, Mo Ting lay inside the bathtub. Seeing this scene made Tang Ning's heart ache. 
she retrieved a bottle of essential oils provided by the hotel and sat on the edge of the bathtub as she gently massaged his shoulders, better. Mo Ting was silent. Tang Ning looked down to find he had fallen asleep. He had fallen into a deep sleep without feeling the need to be cautious. Tang Ning did not wake him up, nor did her delicate hands stop kneading his shoulders. It was not until twenty minutes later, when Tang Ning realized the water had cooled down, did she wake him, go sleep in bed. Mo Ting got out of the bathtub as Tang Ning handed him a clean towel and ordered, go sit in front of the sink. I'll help you shave. Mo Ting put on his robe and submissively did as he was told. Tang Ning stood between Mo Ting's thighs and applied shaving cream on the areas around his lips. Just as she about to start shaving with the razor, Mo Ting suddenly pressed his lips firmly against hers. Tang Ning got a bit of foam in her mouth as she struggled, you're so tired yet you still have the energy to muck around. Wifey, do you have doubts about my stamina? I, Tang Ning was about to explain herself, all she wanted was for Mo Ting to get some rest. However, Mo Ting grabbed onto her slim waist with one fell swoop and removed her robe. You're always so full of energy. I need a recharge. The activity they were about to partake in, was the most efficient form of recharge. The couple were affectionate all the way up until the second half of the night. Just before they went to sleep, Mo Ting suddenly said, Tomorrow, I need to chat to a French director about an upcoming movie. Come with me. Tang Ning smiled tiredly and nodded her head. Mo Ting had always been like this. Although he was Tang Ning's manager, if Hai Rui had an opportunity for cooperation or had other business matters in France, he would schedule it in as well, optimizing their time. The meeting with Claude. N has been scheduled for two days' time, so I will first deal with other business. I originally wanted to let you get some rest, but the French director's wife is a supermodel and she is currently in the US, leaving their two-year-old daughter in his care. He can't possibly step away from her, so I've asked you to come and help take care of her for a bit. I've never taken care of a child. Then treat us as a preview. In the future, we will also have kids. Okay. Tang Ning was tired from the intimate activity they had just finished so she didn't even consider that the director could have hired someone to take care of his child, why would she need to take on this responsibility? But, Mo Ting did not explain to her either. He simply lowered a kiss onto her forehead, go to sleep. After hearing this, Tang Ning found a comfortable spot in Mo Ting's embrace. Mo Ting reached out his arm and pulled her closer before turning off the bedside lamp and entering into a deep sleep with his wife. Why did Mo Ting make an arrangement like this? It was to give Huarong Studio a chance to stalk them. If he didn't give them a little treat, how would he be able to force them to speed up their progress and reveal their underlying scheme? What information did they have in their hands, what did they plan to do and why had they not yet exposed everything? He was going to get an answer for all these questions. As for Chuan Ya, Mo Ting was going to sit back and watch what this clown would get up to. Mo Ting and Tang Ning were to meet the French director at his manor, so Mo Ting led Tang Ning there in low profile. However, en route to the manor, Mo Ting discovered a black car trailing them. It wasn't hard to confirm who it was, as their camera equipment reflected in the sun. But, Mo Ting pretended not to notice as his lips curved up into a smile. He then sped up the car and soon drove into the garage of the manor. Upon seeing the man, Tang Ning realized Mo Ting had come to see the French director, Koch. In the international circles he was extremely well known and had previously won the Oscar for Best Director. However, after getting married and dedicating more time to his daughter, his productions had decreased in quantity. Perhaps it was because his wife was overseas and he had to take care of his daughter on his own, he looked extremely worn out. The little brat was currently clinging to his thigh unwilling to have breakfast. Koch's image was a mess as he smiled apologetically at the couple, I'm so sorry, I really don't think I have the time to talk about our collaboration, in fact, I don't have the intention to consider it at all. Mo Ting let out a gentle laugh as he pointed to Tang Ning and replied, 
my wife can help you with this little problem. As for our collaboration, I'm sure you will be interested. Koch analyzed Tang Ning and adjusted the golden frames on his nose, do you guys have children too? No, but my wife is very gentle and caring, I'm sure she can handle children better than Mr. Koch, Mo Ting replied straightforwardly. Koch shrugged his shoulders, then, I will need to trouble the missus. Tang Ning's French was no worse than Mo Ting's, so she directly approached the little girl, lifted her in her arms and said to the two men, you guys go talk, leave the child with me, I will take good care of her. If I really can't, I will ask the nanny for help. Mo Ting watched as Tang Ning carried the child. His heart suddenly felt a little moved as he lowered his head and asked her, will you really be okay? Yes, Tang Ning nodded her head, gesturing for him not to underestimate her. Koch looked surprisingly at his non-resisting daughter. In Tang Ning's arms she was unexpectedly obedient. So, he asked the little girl, why is it so hard for me to carry you? The little girl cracked up laughing and hugged Tang Ning's neck. It seemed the child based her preferences on good looks. Afterwards, the two men entered the study room to chat. Meanwhile, Tang Ning carried the little girl to a patch of grass in the garden. She had inquired with the maids beforehand and they told her the grass had undergone special treatment and was safe to sit down on. So, she carried the child directly to the grass and sat down. The little girl was called Kathy. She was an adorable little brat. Luckily, Tang Ning was quite patient towards children although director Koch's most recent film Escape broke box office sales in the western markets, it did not open up to the Asian market. Yes, I admit, this is true, Koch replied in a serious tone, after all, the eastern and western culture is very different and I don't have any interest in creating an oriental film. If I was to do so, it would ruin my reputation. I don't like Eastern actors slash actresses, they aren't very good at acting. Yes, I agree, there are indeed more Eastern celebrities than there are true actors. But, I think you should have a look at the script first, before giving me an answer. Finding an actor is not the issue, Mo Ting pulled out the script and handed it to Coke, think about it. Coke had a look at the cover of the script. It didn't have bells and whistles to attract attention, it simply had one word, stupid. Stupid. What an interesting name. Coke couldn't resist flipping open the script. The story was about a talented athlete and an actress who gave birth to a child after a one-night stand. In order to protect his status, he gave away the child. But, a few years later, he got married, only to realize, due to his years of injuries sustained from sports, he had become infertile. As a result, he got divorced and decided to adopt a child as his protege. However, this student was the world's most stupid child. No matter how simple a task, he never seemed to pick it up. Worst of all, the child's parents were uncontactable. He felt he had been tricked, so he tried multiple times to abandon the child. Eventually, the child was adopted by his enemy. Not only that, they discovered the child's talents and trained him into a success. This child had the same athletic talent as he did and broke multiple world records. As this child stood on stage to receive his medal, he simply said one thing, my father abandoned me twelve times. I want to prove to him that he is a B asterisk starred. After reading through the script, Koch slapped his hands on his thighs excitedly, amazing. This is brilliant. In that case, Will Mr. Koch still refuse? Mo Ting rubbed his bottom lip confidently. The draft is already so good, I, Koch's eyes glimmered, I agree to the collaboration, but as for the actor. I guarantee he will be a great actor. Okay, Koch nodded his head in agreement. A moment later, the two men heard cheerful laughing resounding from the garden. Koch held onto the script and approached the window to find Tang Ning hugging Kathy as they rolled in the grass. He couldn't help but laugh, your wife seems to like children. Are you planning to have any? I want her to enjoy a few more years of being doted by me. After all, women have more restrictions than men. 
once she becomes a mother, she will be completely tied down. Koch nodded his head, you're right President Mo. If it wasn't because my wife went to the States and left me with this opportunity of taking care of a child, I wouldn't have known how difficult it was. Your wife is very fortunate. I'm the one that is fortunate. Since that's the case, I don't think I need to hesitate anymore let's sign a contract. I believe someone that deeply loves their wife will be able to produce a heart-wrenching and emotional film better than anyone. It will be like the film is your child. Mo Ting looked at Tang Ning and smiled, I can't deny, ever since being with her, everything I do seems to have meaning. Mr. Koch, do you have a set of binoculars? Yes. May I borrow it? Koch handed the binoculars to Mo Ting curiously. Mo Ting scanned the premises and as expected, found a daredevil reporter sitting in a tree holding a camera. He was indeed good at capturing candid photos. Unfortunately. Is someone stalking you? These reporters are disgusting, Koch was a bit agitated as he watched Mo Ting put down the binoculars. No choice, my wife is too famous, Mo Ting explained, she is also a model. I hope you both stay safe, Koch once again shook hands with Mo Ting before sitting down and signing the contract. As for the reckless reporters outside. They were sent by Editor Lin. Had they all arrived yet? After discussing their collaboration, Koch invited Mo Ting and Tang Ning to dinner, but Mo Ting politely declined. As they left, Mo Ting drove Tang Ning back to the hotel. On the way, he asked about her interaction with Kathy, Koch's daughter. Tang Ning found Kathy a bit overwhelming, but Mo Ting assured he'd take note of her behavior for their future child. Tang Ning chuckled at the thought of Mo Ting as a father imagining him disciplining their child. Mo Ting expressed his desire to announce their relationship but explained his strategic delay to protect Tang Ning from further defamation by Huarong Studio, who was tailing them. He deliberately lured them into a trap to expose their intentions and then announce their relationship. Impressed by Mo Ting's foresight, Tang Ning encouraged him to proceed with their plan. At the hotel, Huarong's editor Lin instructed his team to fabricate a scandal, falsely claiming Tang Ning had an illegitimate daughter in France, using photos of her with Kathy. They planned to exploit Tang Ning's absence from Beijing and tarnish her reputation. Meanwhile, Fang Yu returned to the hotel and found Huo Jingjing hesitant to leave. Sensing her discomfort, he offered her refuge at his home. Huo Jingjing troubled by her apartment's unhappy memories and lack of privacy, agreed to stay. Fang Yu retrieved clothes for her and insisted on driving her home, but Huo Jingjing proposed staying at his place instead. She felt safer and more comfortable there, willing to help care for Fang Yu's daughter, Uer. Grateful for Fang Yu's support, Huo Jingjing suggested selling her apartment and moving closer to him, expressing her lack of ties elsewhere. Fang Yu, Understanding her needs, agreed to let her stay and went to fetch her belongings. Night fell in France as Tang Ning sat under the soft glow of a lamp, casually flipping through a magazine. Suddenly, Mo Ting appeared by her side, informing her of his plan to commission a set of jewelry for her. Despite Tang Ning's lack of enthusiasm for expensive accessories, Mo Ting had arranged it as her manager, noting the need for her to occasionally wear such items for her image. Tang Ning, Surprised by the gesture, questioned why Mo Ting hadn't mentioned it before. Mo Ting assured her it was all part of his meticulous planning, subtly integrating the jewelry into her schedule without her notice. He handed her the car keys, explaining that she needed to meet with the designer to take her measurements, as the designer needed to urgently return to Japan. Understanding Mo Ting's underlying motive to provide material for Huarong Studio, Tang Ning agreed to go. She donned sunglasses to maintain the facade of secrecy for the reporters watching them. Meanwhile, Huarong's operatives, stationed outside the hotel, anxiously awaited Tang Ning's movements. Frustrated by their failed attempts to capture photos of her, they endured the cold night, hoping for a breakthrough. Finally, they spotted Tang Ning entering her car alone and eagerly followed her, snapping photos along the way. 
believing they had succeeded in their mission to capture evidence of Tang Ning's infidelity, they gleefully reported back to Editor Lin, anticipating their reward. Lin instructed them to return to the hotel, confident they had gathered enough evidence to tarnish Tang Ning's reputation. Unbeknownst to them, Mo Ting had been trailing them discreetly, observing their actions with disdain. Upon Tang Ning's call, he confirmed that he had been monitoring the reporters and instructed Tang Ning to meet him at the hotel. As Tang Ning joined Mo Ting in the car, he explained that the reporters were celebrating their supposed victory. Tang Ning remained unfazed, recognizing their misunderstanding and expressing her trust in Mo Ting to rectify the situation. Mo Ting revealed the lead reporter's troubled past, explaining his motives behind targeting Tang Ning. Tang Ning, unfazed by the hatred directed towards her, found the situation ironically amusing, confident that Mo Ting would eventually vindicate her. Mo Ting stretched out his hand and stroked Tang Ning's ink black hair, this is a given. Actually, the thing that Tang Ning admired the most about Mo Ting was his ability to draw a fine line between love and hate. When someone was right, they were right, when someone was wrong, they were wrong. He was firm on his decisions and never beat around the bush, he was always clear-cut. That's why she was suited to the entertainment industry. She was suited to the life of accompanying Mo Ting in this unstable industry. And all he wanted to do was to present her with glory. After returning to the hotel, Tang Ning sat by Mo Ting's side as she kept him company while he read through his documents. Mo Ting turned his head to look at Tang Ning's semi-closed eyes and laughed, You have an interview with Claude. N tomorrow. Hurry and get some rest. I want to hug you to sleep, Tang Ning replied with a raspy voice. Mo Ting glanced at the documents in front of him before helping Tang Ning up and leading her to the bed. After sitting down on the bed, he patted his chest, come here. Tang Ning flipped aside the blankets and lay beside Mo Ting as she wrapped her arms around his waist. Mo Ting embraced her with one arm and read through his documents with the other. However, after reading one page, he realized he had no way of flipping to the next. Tang Ning held his arm tightly in place, it seemed she was doing it on purpose. Mo Ting understood her intention and put down his documents before giving L. Yu Che a phone call. President, Director Seng has come looking for me quite a few times. He wants to invest in stupid on behalf of Bu Film and Television. But, from what I see, this is his son, J. King's idea. We already have sufficient funds for stupid. If he comes looking for you again, you can directly turn him away, Mo Ting replied in a deepened voice. But, he is a shareholder of Hai Rui. Plus, he has already given 3.2% of the shares to his son, J. King. It appears J. King wants to get involved in Hai Rui's operations. I can't guarantee that he won't make a move again in future. Perhaps my recent actions have made them think I've been blinded by love and that their opportunity has come. President, I am merely reporting this incident to you. It is not enough to make you worry, L. Yu Che immediately explained. Keep an eye on their every move. After speaking, Mo Ting hung up his phone and placed it gently on top of the bedside table. Hugging Tang Ning, he lay back down. In the darkness, his eyes fired up, there always had to be a few greedy people that wanted control over Hai Rui's operations. Did they think just because he was Tang Ning's manager, he wouldn't be able to manage Hai Rui? Were they questioning his capability? 7 p.m. in France, 8 a.m. in Beijing. This was the first night Huo Jingjing officially moved into Fang Yu's home. Of course, nothing happened, she slept in the guest room. Huo Jingjing woke up early in the morning before she heard Fang Yu's bedroom door open not long after. She spotted Fang Yu wearing a pair of boxers as he entered the kitchen. Fang Yu was a little surprised, he never expected Huo Jingjing to wake up so early. He immediately ran back into his room and put on a robe before reappearing in front of her. Why did you wake up so early? I have an interview today and may need to go overseas in a couple days, Huo Jingjing explained, plus, it is almost January. So, for the sake of Fashion Week in March, I may need to remain overseas for quite some time. Fang Yu nodded his head, 
but his face did not show much emotion, I won't be able to go overseas. There are quite a few matters to deal with at Hai Rui. I don't need you to accompany me the way that President Mo accompanies Tang Ning. I just, after a short pause, Huo Jingjing continued, if I am to be gone for three months, will I return to find that you have become someone else's boyfriend? Or perhaps, will another female artist like Zhen Mani appear, requiring your protection? So, it was a woman's paranoia that was at work. Fang Yu retrieved some milk and other breakfast ingredients from the fridge. As he closed the fridge door, he replied, I only have two girlfriends, the big one is currently standing in my kitchen doorway, whilst the little one is sleeping away in my child's bedroom. Huo Jingjing felt a little silly. So she scurried behind Fang Yu and wrapped her arms around him, you don't seem very passionate towards me. Fang Yu did not say a word, he simply let out a laugh before freeing himself from Huo Jingjing's embrace and returning to his bedroom. He then came back out holding his household register and handed it to Huo Jingjing, after she passed away, the incident with Fang Yu happened. All up, it has been seven years. As my life revolves around the industry, apart from the nanny, you are the only woman that has entered this house. Then what is the meaning of this? If you want to get married, let me know. You are the only woman that makes me feel impulsive to do something like that. Huo Jingjing froze in surprise. They had just become official yesterday, was he proposing? I don't need you to tell me right now. I just want you to know how I feel. The two people had both experienced so much and had so much on their shoulders. Being given the opportunity to continue living was already a huge gift from God. Huo Jingjing held onto the household register as her eyes turned red, Tang Ning was right. God always leaves the best for last. I finally feel that all my previous suffering was worth it. Fang Yu leaned over and kissed Huo Jingjing on the forehead, go get changed and give Yu Er a bath while you're at it. In a lavishly decorated studio in France, Tang Ning and Mo Ting met with renowned designer Claude N, known for his fixation on models' legs. Despite Claude N's insistence that Tang Ning stay in France and sign on as a model for his agency, Mo Ting firmly asserted that Tang Ning would only participate in the one shoot they had agreed upon. Mo Ting made it clear that Tang Ning would not compromise her principles or be exploited for publicity. Despite Claude N's displeasure, Mo Ting's unwavering stance protected Tang Ning's integrity and autonomy. In a lavishly decorated studio in France, Tang Ning and Mo Ting met with renowned designer Claude N, known for his fixation on models' legs. Despite Claude N's insistence that Tang Ning stay in France and sign on as a model for his agency, Mo Ting firmly asserted that Tang Ning would only participate in the one shoot they had agreed upon. Mo Ting made it clear that Tang Ning would not compromise her principles or be exploited for publicity. Despite Claude N's displeasure, Mo Ting's unwavering stance protected Tang Ning's integrity and autonomy. Claude N's temper flared, and he pointed towards the doorway indicating for Tang Ning and Mo Ting to leave. Tang Ning reassessed her previous judgment of Claude N, realizing his fixation on legs was more of a fetish than a professional preference. As Tang Ning and Mo Ting left the studio, they encountered Chuan Yat, a representative from Star King, along with a model from the agency. Chuan Yat taunted Mo Ting, suggesting that Tang Ning's failure to secure an advertisement with Claude N was a defeat for Hai Rui against Star King. However, Mo Ting calmly revealed that Claude N had been eliminated as an option due to his unreasonable demands. He also exposed Chuan Yi's clandestine dealings with Claude N, demonstrating his strategic foresight and ability to protect Tang Ning's interests. Mo Ting's revelations left Chuan Ye stunned and embarrassed. Tang Ning marveled at Mo Ting's behind-the-scenes maneuvers, realizing the extent of his meticulous planning and protection of her. Despite feeling overwhelmed by Mo Ting's capabilities, Tang Ning appreciated his efforts to shield her from unnecessary stress. Mo Ting explained that their next meeting was with Fulls, a renowned design company, whose owner had expressed interest in collaborating with Tang Ning. Tang Ning reflected on the surreal turn of events during their trip to France, feeling grateful for Mo Ting's guidance and support. 
At Falls, Tang Ning was warmly welcomed by the owner, who admired Tang Ning's work and proposed a collaboration to showcase Tang Ning as inspiration for a costume design. Mo Ting charmingly accepted the offer, recognizing the mutual benefits of the partnership. After a successful dinner, Tang Ning and Mo Ting returned to their hotel, where Mo Ting shared the story of Stupid with Tang Ning. Tang Ning found the script impressive and wondered about the screenwriter's identity, but Mo Ting cryptically revealed that she didn't know him. As they retired for the evening, Tang Ning marveled at Mo Ting's ability to navigate the complexities of the entertainment industry and protect her interests. Despite feeling awed by Mo Ting's prowess, Tang Ning trusted him implicitly and appreciated his unwavering support. Through their interactions in France, Tang Ning realized the depth of Mo Ting's commitment to her and his exceptional ability to navigate challenging situations. With Mo Ting by her side, Tang Ning felt empowered to face whatever challenges lay ahead in her career. In a stylish studio in France, Tang Ning underwent measurements for her collaboration with Fulls, a renowned design company. While Tang Ning was occupied, Mo Ting engaged in conversation with Fulls, who suggested Tang Ning consider pursuing film and television opportunities. Mo Ting, however, remained noncommittal, emphasizing Tang Ning's current focus on her modeling career. Fulls persisted in encouraging Mo Ting to reconsider, pointing out Tang Ning's potential and versatility. Mo Ting's gaze remained fixed on Tang Ning throughout the conversation indicating his unwavering support and admiration for her. Tang Ning, perceptive as ever, sensed their discussion was about her and approached them with curiosity. Tang Ning playfully remarked on Mo Ting's attentive gaze, to which Mo Ting responded affectionately. Despite Full's continued encouragement, Mo Ting remained steadfast in his support of Tang Ning's modeling career. After leaving the studio, Tang Ning and Mo Ting planned to enjoy a leisurely stroll through Paris. However, their plans were interrupted when Liu Che approached Mo Ting with a request to purchase items for Long Ji. Tang Ning volunteered to handle the task, assuring Mo Ting of her familiarity with France and her ability to distinguish between authentic and counterfeit goods. Mo Ting, reluctant to let Tang Ning wander off alone, hesitated momentarily before agreeing, albeit with the condition that Tang Ning stay nearby. Tang Ning reassured Mo Ting and set off to complete the task, accompanied by two bodyguards provided by the hotel. As Tang Ning explored the streets of Paris, she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Ignoring the unsettling sensation, she completed her errand and returned to the hotel. Meanwhile, a spy hired by Chuan Ye discreetly followed Tang Ning, capturing photos of her every move. Back at the hotel, Tang Ning settled in to watch a movie while awaiting Mo Ting's return. Unbeknownst to her, Chuan Ye orchestrated a plan to create the illusion of a romantic encounter between himself and Tang Ning. He strategically posted photos on social media, suggesting a rendezvous between them. As the flight back to Beijing approached, Tang Ning and Mo Ting encountered Chuan Ye at the airport. Despite Chuan Ye's attempts to engage them, Tang Ning and Mo Ting maintained their composure and boarded the plane without acknowledging him. During the flight, Chuan Ye posted photos of his fabricated encounter with Tang Ning, sparking widespread speculation and confusion among fans. Tang Ning's loyal supporters expressed disbelief and concern, questioning the authenticity of the photos and their implications for Tang Ning's relationship with Mo Ting. Amidst the online frenzy, Huo Jingjing reached out to Fang Yu for clarification, seeking to understand the situation. Fang Yu assured her that they were handling the matter, indicating that the truth behind the photos would soon be revealed. As the plane landed in Beijing, Tang Ning and Mo Ting remained unfazed by the rumors, confident in their relationship and their ability to overcome any challenges thrown their way. Meanwhile, Chuan Yi's manipulative tactics served only to further alienate him from Tang Ning and Mo Ting, cementing their disdain for his deceitful behavior. Despite the drama surrounding them, Tang Ning and Mo Ting emerged unscathed, their bond stronger than ever. With their unwavering trust and mutual support, they were prepared to face whatever obstacles lay ahead, secure in the knowledge that their love would endure.